2 to 4. With that ratio, you go to 30 to 60. When it is perfected, 30 to 60, you don't feel any uneasiness. Then you try, next step, you try to omit this pause. A very interesting subject. Those who practice this, that particular group is called prana vadana, prana vedana. Those who know the mysteries of the pranas, subtler forces of life. So they omit this, exhale, a pause comes, and then you inhale. Inhale, a pause comes. So you try to omit these two pauses. And then you have got capacity to expand. You can exhale and wait. You can inhale and wait. That's called komaka. This is called rechaka. This is called puraka. And this is called kumbhaka. So what I did, I condensed the entire method of breathing and taught you that it is easy and shortcut for you to practice if you practice this way. Use a pillow, lie down on the floor, shavasana, by applying mula and practicing. Of course you have already done diaphragmatic breath, and then you practice this. Make a point, your toes. Feel as though you are exhaling to your toes. And then inhale through your toes to the crown of your head. And then you start counting by watching your capacity. Slowly expanding that. No haste is allowed in it. If you want to detect this path in two days' time, ten days' time, one month's time, it's not possible, it should not be done. Don't hurt the finer tissues of your lungs. If you exert them, you will be hurting the finer tissues of your lungs. But once or twice a day, if you do it, there will be clarity of mind, you can see. Six days, don't do. Only one day you do, you will find clarity of mind that day. Because mind and breath, they function together. They are close friends. They are twin laws of life. They should be understood. There was a debate in our monastery once. When we follow the Vedantic principle, why should we follow yoga path? My master said, yoga path should be followed, and when you have accomplished whatever yoga teaches you, then you follow Vedanta later. Without disciplining yourself, without equipping yourself, if you follow Vedanta, you are not able to assimilate. It's just like drinking finest wine through a dirty paper cup. Nobody does that. Best of the wines is taken through chalice. You see. So what I am trying to do, she, I told you, Sri Vidya helps you going through all these hurdles and I am giving you a system which is condensed system, shortest cut, so that you can go safely beyond. I will not touch those points where you have certain dangers. Because if you commit mistakes and uselessly make efforts, as the books say, and I am warning teachers also, many teachers do not practice and teach others just to do experiments, that's a very dangerous thing to do. In books there are many things written. Some of the writers wrote them without knowing. Picked from here, there and wrote a book. I will tell you about Bhut Shuddhi in Laya Yoga. The writer writes, you see, let your 
let the earth be dissolved in the water, let water be dissolved in the fire, and let fire be dissolved in the air, and let air be dissolved in the sky. What have you understood? Nothing. And suppose you practice that my body is dissolving, and it is becoming water, and my water is, that water is being dissolved by the fire, you will find a problem which cannot be cured by any medicine. Bad yoga practice can lead you to very dangerous situations for which there is no medicine. Suppose your pranic vehicles are disturbed because of your foolish practices that you have read through books. Where is the medicine for that? Therefore a teacher is needed. And teachers should be skilled enough not to mislead their students, not to make experiments on them. Let teacher make experiments on himself, on themselves. So, we have always on the scriptures warning. Yellow mark on the scriptures. Don't do it. You see. It's a tradition. I will never, that's why I do not touch too much kumbhaka. Because you do not eat right food, you lead very hectic life, you don't watch your capacity. So I avoid the subject, but those who are students and those who are, who are treading the path, there's no harm, I will teach them. For bandhas are involved in it, and there are mainly three locks. When Jalandar Bandha is applied, when Uddhana Bandha is applied, <coughs> and when Mula Bandha is applied, <coughs> what you teach your student? You teach inhale <coughs> and retain and exhale. The books say like that. Teachers don't teach that. Teachers say, exhale first. First exhale, then inhale. That set is different. Now you inhale, and then retain, and then exhale. But it just, these, are, these things are not meant in the books. They are not written in the books. So directly a student comes, immediately you teach him inhalation. Because there is so much impurity in the lungs, how come you don't have sense about it? So you first you should learn to teach student exhalation, not inhalation directly. Though the book says inhalation, puraka, kumbhaka, and rechaka. It has become the experience. Yogis will never write like that. In fact, what has happened, those who are very experienced, they did not have time to write. There are only few books written by those who were experienced, yet they had time to write, or they had students who noted down, jotted down their notes, and then published Most of the books on yoga, philosophy and religion, history, are just mess. They create confusion. There is no clarity. You can easily find out somebody who is realized and somebody who is not realized. You know. So therefore, scriptures does not mean books. Scriptures are a category. This subject you should practice in front of your teacher or come to see teacher wherever you find or understand what he says. <laughs>